So uh, the next series of presentations is going to be led by uh, um, Lorna McIver, who's sitting immediately to my left, and Lorna will introduce all the speakers in, in this, in this uh, section. Um, really, it's to give my voice a, a, a rest. My, my throat is struggling, as you can hear. Um, so uh, I'm going to hand over to Lorna in a minute, um, just to say a little bit about her, her role in, uh, in my organisation, SEPA. Um, Lorna is a senior project manager who's got loads of experience uh, working in a diverse range of different programmes and projects. Um, she joined the LifeSmart Waste project about halfway through it um, and has helped tremendously with its project management. Um, it's been a great driving force and I, I thank you uh, as the chairman of that project board. I thank you very much, Lorna. Um, and particularly, uh, she's been dealing with the delivery of innovative interventions approaches. So I'll hand you over to Lorna. Callum for my introduction. Good afternoon everyone. It's an absolute delight to be here today and I'm really keen to show you what we've developed as part of the Life Smart Race project. Hands up in the audience if you like anything for free. Come on, come on, there's something for free. All the Scots. The Scots, we definitely like something for free. Well today I'm not going to disappoint you. Today and from there up on after you can use these tools, the ones that are available, and once the others come online, uh, you'll be able to use, take these tools and use them, and we'd encourage you to do so. You'd be able to adapt them or develop them further, adapt them to your needs, develop them, whatever suits you. Whilst we've developed these tools for environmental crime, and we believe that they're relevant to other, eh, we're developing for waste crime, should I say, we believe they're relevant for environmental crime, but also environmental issues in some cases. And I believe they will help you to work smarter as regulators. Sorry, I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> I love technology, particularly when it works. And just now, I'm not managing to get it to go forward, just like my predecessors. Is that it going now? There's only one button to press for me. <laughs> right, thank you, thank you. The yeah, MIT uh, talk is really about tools, the techniques, and the technology. Why we need to tackle waste crime has been made really uh, clear to me from everybody that's spoken this morning. How we tackle it has also been made clear that it's not easy. But as Albert Einstein said, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we use to create them. What's been very clear is we have to do things differently, we have to be innovative in our approach, and we work in partnership. And it's probably with a wider range of partners than we've ever worked with before. <coughs> and I have to say, this is, this is really what forms the basis of our Life Smart Waste approach to solving and tackling waste crime. Our approach is really about, our strategy is about identifying the problems and gathering the intelligence on this. It's about understanding the vulnerabilities in the supply chain and building action, or providing actionable intelligence on this. We're building effective partnerships with others and when we're building these partnerships, we're defining shared objectives. And it helps if we actually get these objectives to not only tackle the problem, but align with the partners in organisational objectives so that it's easier to get their resources and commitment. This session will focus on what the, pro what the project has tried to do, how it's tried to do things differently. Firstly, on how we uh, improve our understanding of waste crime by use of the tools. And Eric, Sam, Lavender, and Eric and myself will cover this part. It's important that we get the intelligence first before we uh, go on to tackling these interventions. If we don't have the intelligence, we're at risk of run, uh, tackling the wrong problem, possibly tackling a symptom rather than a root cause. And for me, the actual approach for this that we've developed or that we work to as part of this project is really like a continuous improvement cycle. We undertake the uh, interventions and we learn from what's gone well, what's gone not so well, and we try and improve and share learning for the next time. 
I want to give you an example of when to use these tools. So I want to give you an example of a sort of organised, an operational context. I'm showing here the, what we call the compliance spectrum. And really this shows you the attitudes and embrace businesses um, in the marketplace today. On the left, we have the criminal, chancer, careless. And then it sort of moves through to people who are confused, maybe people are compliant. And thankfully, we do have some that are, are champions and that really want to lead the way. There's many that are invisible to us um, organisations, that are invisible, or businesses that are invisible to us as regulators. And in this context, we can use our remote sensing tools, and this would help us find some of the unlicensed sites. We would then take this information and use the um, open source techniques. So the open source techniques is really what's on the internet, uh, particularly social media. It's a, a really rich and cost-effective means of uh, gathering information and intelligence. So looking at this in information on this inf unlicensed site, it can cover intelligence about the offender, and that um, can help allow the regulator to either educate the offender or enforcement action. Equally, we could share this information with partner agencies and they could take um, an intervent or take the um, action. So these partner agencies, for example, could be the police or tax inspectors or trading standards. So they would intervene, disrupt, and where applicable, they could remove these actors from the industry. So now I want to sort of look at um, somebody that is being regulated. They've come to us and they've maybe applied, are at the stage of applying for a license for a waste management activity. This is when we could apply our financial risk assessment tool. And primarily, this is really to uh, spot bad business models or weak business models. And this is so that we can either get further information or so that we can intervene early. I don't want to say any more about um, this toolkit, but Willie Wilson will be speaking about that on day three. The project has also developed a number of uh, four of waste crime indicators. And what these do is we, we're using, making better use of the existing data that we get from our license holders, so our waste data returns. And these help us to detect anomalies within the data. So one of the uh, tools, uh, one of these indicators we used was, uh, where we, uh, was a site receiving a disproportionately high amounts of waste code compared to a similar site. And we applied this to, we've got a, soon to have a, there's a policy change in Scotland, which means landfill operators will be prohibited from taking biodegradable uh, municipal waste in the future. So applying this uh, tool, this uh, indicator, it highlighted that from our uh, landfill sites, 12 of them out of our 60 were at risk of this ban. Now this information is really useful to our regulatory staff because it will help them target their efforts. And I want to give you, to sort of move on, to give you a little bit more about a few of the tools. And we thought the horizon scanning is really applicable for anything that you do. So why this is one of the reasons we've put it on here today. And as you know, horizon scanning isn't new. It's been around for decades or longer. Um, people, people have used it in all different forms. But what is new and innovative is the way we're applying it to waste crime. And we're applying it to inform better decisions on what to focus on so that we're better prepared for the changes that are coming our way. I have to stress it's a continuous process of searching for emerging issues and threats and, and anticipating their potential impact on waste crime. This helps us get a common understanding whether we're working at a local, national or international level and identifies our priority areas, whether to include within a strategic plan, an operational plan, or whether indeed you need policy changes. Now, I think what is really uh, good to do. I cannot, and I'm really sorry, as much as I'd like to do it, I cannot predict the future. So what I can do, though, to demonstrate the horizon scanning is I would like to show you an example of events unfolding. Now, to help you get it back in time, I'm going to go back to 1980, and I'd really, really appreciate if you'd all stand up 
in the audience to help me get you back to 1980. You didn't know there was a magician in the room, did you? Okay. Everyone standing? Cool, you're all ready. Well, for me, music's the best form to get me back to a time zone. So, if you've heard of Barbara Streisand with her song, Woman in Love, which was top of the pops in the Belgium and UK charts on this uh, day in 1980, you're welcome to sit down. <laughs> Anybody? Great, thank you. Also, if you've heard of Pac-Man or even soft, um, played the Pac-Man video game, or the thing in the middle, which is the Rubik's Cube, again, these were, they came out in 1980. You can sit down. I'm hoping there's some people that are still standing. <laughs> Don't be shy, it's okay. I was expecting people to be standing. And really, you just need to take my word for it. But this is the mobile phone that was sought after in 1980. I've not quite got the one that's sought after today, but you know how far we've come by showing that picture. So we're all back in 1980. You probably know which... Uh, event I'm going to unfold. Yes, 1980 was when China became the world's largest importer of recyclables. In 2013, they tighten up what they'll accept. Shipments are turned away when they don't comply with this. And we know at that time there's little infrastructure elsewhere to manage the rejected waste. In 2014, further adjustments of what can be imported. And as we all know, the more recent ones in 2019, further restrictions on what can be imported. Were we prepared in 2018 to adopt this policy change? I would really appreciate if I could have a show of hands in the audience if you think your country was prepared um, in 2018 for this policy change. Is there any country? Anybody got their hand right up? No, and sad to say nobody was prepared. Now I'm not saying that um, through doing the horizon scanning we would have been prepared because what it depends on, there's sort of uh, three phases to horizon scanning. There's gathering your intelligence, your insight and your action. And you need to be have gone right the way through of to actually carrying out action to know what's important to make sure that you are, are highlighting and taking action on the or, uh, issues of importance. So I want to run through this model with you. In phase one, so that's gathering your intelligence about waste crime now and in the future. You gather data from any source at all, newspapers, blogs, uh, journals, trade journals, uh, foreign sites. And you organize that as you go. You share, share this information with others through writing a short document, which we call a scan. And really the short document is, what did you find and what does that mean for waste crime? Phase two is about creating insight into what the intelligence means for changing criminals' behaviour and the patterns of crime. And we tend to do this one in a, sort of or, in a workshop um, context with experts in the room, or and depending on what, whether you're a local, national or international, would depend on who and where people have come from. In this setting, we're sort of assessing and we're sharing these scans and we're assessing and deciding what's new and important. And we're doing a sort of a scoring on these scans, which really helps uh, decide the relative ranking or the relative importance of each of the emerging issues amongst the people that are making these, these decisions. And this helps you see which things are more of particular strategic importance or urgency. And then move on to sort of deepening our, our insight on the issues. And this is really to determine how we think organisations should respond to this. And phase three, this is about working together to conduct further research where appropriate on the priority issue and then plan and undertake your action. We've mentioned earlier that we did have a horizon scanning exercise and that was led by uh, Nancy Isram. And it's probably about a year ago just now that when this took place. We had two workshops, one for the delegates to understand the methodology and to understand what was their requirements to undertake the scanning. And in between the first and the second workshop, the delegates undertook their scanning exercises. And then at the second workshop, they shared this information, they shared the intelligence between each other, 
and then they had to held discussions to work through that insight phase. Two out of the three top issues that were raised at that uh, workshop were the impact of the China import restrictions and the shipbreaking practices causing env environmental harm and endangered lives. These two are, as you know, are on our agenda for this conference. That's all I want to say about um, horizon scanning, but I do think it's of use to it in a wide range of ways. I now want to uh, hand over to Eric McEachern from SEPA, who will go on to another tool that's really useful to, uh, to us, and that's competitive behaviours. <coughs> 